So in this part of the lesson, 2.1.2, we are going to learn about two different uh, structural member properties, and we're going to break it up into two parts. In this first part, we're going to look at something called the moment of inertia. And uh, just to get us started, recall that any structural member is uh, typically what we would think of as a beam, and that beam can carry a load uh, or force and a moment as well. So the first property we're going to look at is called moment of inertia. And the big thing to remember about moment of inertia is that it is totally dependent on uh, that structural member's shape um, or its, uh, if you look at its cross-sectional area, the base and the height and how that's arranged. And so in general, the moment of inertia is a measure of stiffness, or in other words, the higher the moment of inertia, uh, which is designated I, or capital I, the higher that number, the greater its resistance to bending, or really kind of the stiffer it is. We can kind of think of it that way. Well, let's take a look then at some principles. So if you have just a, a regular old board, an eight foot long board, um, here it's Douglas fir. And here you can see the same board in two different configurations. Uh, and think of the floor in your house. So if you are uh, walking on your floor, you have both of these kinds of configurations. Uh, if you go underneath your floor, and if you have a, uh, a, an unfinished basement, and if you walk into your basement and look up, you're going to see both. You're going to see the joist configuration, which is more of uh, like a vertical rectangle. And when we walk across the floor, we're walking on planks. Same board. Uh, but let's take a look, a closer look, at you know, how we calculate moment of inertia and why would we want uh, one configuration over another? Is there an advantage? So what really then is the difference between board A and board B? Uh, which, by the way, that is what the A and B signifies. It's board A and board B. The forces are the yellow arrows, and those are assumed to be exactly the same in this example. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the next slide that you're going to see because the voiceover does not work for that slide. Uh, what you're going to see is a simulation of what happens when those two forces are applied. And what you're going to see is for board A, it does not deflect or move as much as board B. And then in the slide following, uh, we'll talk a little bit as to why. So the reason that board B uh, deflected more than board A has totally to do with the fact, because it's the same board and it's the same force, totally to do with the fact that it has a different moment of inertia. So uh, let's learn how to calculate that. Here I have the cross section of that board in the A configuration. So the long part uh, is vertical. And when we calculate moment of inertia, we always use... Uh, uh, similar convention uh, with B and H. That is, H runs vertically, or the height. And uh, so, in other words, it coincides with the y-axis. B coincides with the x-axis and is the base. B does not mean bottom, but if you want to use that to uh, remember it, that's probably a good mnemonic. Now, each shape, in this case uh, a rectangle, each shape has its own formula. Um, there's some nasty, hairy math that uh, gets into the derivation of the uh, formula for each shape, but that's a whole other course, and we're not going to get into that. Uh, we're just going to talk about the formulas, uh, and in this case, it's pretty simple. For a rectangle, the moment of inertia is simply the base times the cube of the height divided by 12. And so, as you can imagine, the units are, in this case, inches cubed. 
Now we could use feet cubed and meters cubed and so on, but in this case, it's just simply inches to, I'm sorry, inches to the fourth, the fourth power. So if we look at beam A then, and we recall from our, a few slides ago, the uh, long dimension is five and a half inches and the short dimension was an inch and a half. So let's do some plug and chug. When we do that, using our formula, plug in one and a half for B, five and a half, and cube that number, divided by 12, and we come up with um, an I, or moment of inertia, equal to 21 inches to the fourth. Well, let's take a look at beam B. Same board, same dimensions, just laid differently. So here in beam B, five and a half inches is, is our B dimension. In other words, it's horizontally. And then our one and a half is our H. That is the one we cube. And when we plug and chug and do the math, we find that in this case, I equals 1.5. So you can see for the same board, they're way different in terms of their moments of inertia. So going back to our um, simulation, we can see now why if we relate the, the deflection or the deformation, we can see when we relate that to moment of inertia, or I, that board B has the lower moment of inertia has more deflection. It's not as stiff. And it turns out that I think the math is about 13.4. We'll say it's 14 times as stiff. Well, okay, what's that mean? If I have a, let's say that deflection in beam B is caused by 100 pounds. I don't know that that's the case, but let's just assume so for the sake of discussion. So if that's 100 pounds to get that same exact deflection, I would have to have if 14 is correct, I will have to have 1,400 pounds on beam A to get the exact same deflection. That's, that's the significance of I in the moment of inertia. But we all know and we've seen, uh, we've experienced somehow in some way that not all beams are rectangles. We know that not all beams are wood. Um, you have seen somewhere, somehow, that uh, when, you, when large buildings and bridges and other structures are being built, there are all kinds of different shapes and all kinds of different materials. Um, so, let's, so let's peel back the onion a little bit and figure out why you would want to have uh, different shapes and sizes and so forth. So here we have two kinds of beams, uh, a non-composite beam or a solid shape, and a composite beam, which is made up of three shapes, and in this case, uh, three rectangles, which make up the I-beam. And so when we compare the moments of inertia, I, and the areas, uh, we see that for the rectangle, we have 10.67 uh, with an area of 8 square inches. And then for the composite beam, we have I is 6.08 and an area of 2.7. Now, we're assuming here in this example that the composite beam started off uh, as the same dimensions as the rectangle, and we've essentially just removed some of the material. So that allows us to make an apples to apples comparison. Well, so if you, let's look at the uh, I for a little bit. So 10.67 is higher than 6.08. So you might say, well, Mr. Tegmar, I don't get it. Why the heck would someone use um, a composite beam then if it's less? Well, that's a very good question. Take a look also, though, at the area. So if we look at the uh, areas, uh, we have much less than half. We have about three-eighths of the area uh, in the composite beam, which means we have, about, assuming it's the same material throughout, three-eighths of the mass, three-eighths of the cost. And, but we still have uh, six eighths or 60% of the strength. So, uh, you know, we could come up with some fancy ratio of like strength versus cost and things like that. And if we did that, we would find that the composite beam is actually much, much more beneficial. 
So and then we could adjust the dimensions of the composite beam to give us a, an equivalent eye of 10.67, and our area would still be much less than 8. So we're saving on cost, not giving up anything on strength or stiffness. So essentially what that means is we're doing more with less. And, and that concludes the first part of the uh, presentations regarding structural members. And next we're going to take a look at something that relates to the um, structure of the material itself.